on 882 6PR. This is Perth Tonight with Chris Ilsley. Kind of feel a kinship with Ben Aylett these days, like me, he has to wear glasses. <laughs> if we don't <laughs> put right. them on, we both feel our way in the studio. And I don't know about you, mate, I feel a seeing eye dog coming on. <laughs> Well, yeah, I suppose we'll eventually get there one day. Yeah, we will. We uh, will indeed. Thankfully for me, um, up close, things are fine. It's just the distances I struggle with. So. Oh, you struggle with distances. I'm the yeah. reverse because yep. you know, all these screens and everything that surround me, I can't see those. The distance screens yeah. are new. I can see fine. <laughs> There we go. If we could sort of eliminate, if we could sort of halve your problem and halve my problem, we'd meet halfway in the middle and everything would be fine. Well, it's the same with Mrs. Aylett. So, uh, yeah, we're, we've both got at opposite ends of the, the vision spectrum thing. So oh, Okay, so she sees differently to how you see. Yeah, she's like your, your, your eyesight. So mine's yeah. kind of unique, I think. Well, I'm good with stuff that's a long way away. I can't even yeah. read small print a long way away. You bring something up close, it's just ridiculous. It is. Yeah. It's crazy. Anyway. Cyber security... Awareness Week. Yes. Was something you mentioned. Now, you have, I suppose you call it an online exercise known as the Intrusion Room. Oh, yeah. And it gives you the perspective of a penetration test. And, geez, I'm glad I don't have a dirty mind. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, what the hell's a penetration <clears throat> tester? All right. Well, we'll start off with the, the website. Now, the website is called intrusionroom.com. Uh, yep. And it takes you through, it, it's almost like a, a point and click adventure. Yeah. But it's set in the settings of you trying to break into a business uh, to then gain access to information. Right. <clears throat> now, this is the sort of thing that penetration testers do. Now, these people are hired and they're professionally engaged in... Um, so their idea is to penetrate people's computer systems to check for vulnerabilities. Uh, businesses in general. So yeah. it could be uh, getting into their buildings... It could be getting into their computer systems. It could when be you getting say getting into their buildings, you mean using the computers to actually physically gain access to a building? No, using physical access to gain uh, access oh, through a building okay. to get access to a gotcha. computer. Yep, yep. Yeah, so they find ways to <clears throat> either uh, like um, get past locked doors or uh, find easy ways through things. Or they might even do something called social engineering, which is going to be tricking people into letting them in. So this tests a business's ability to repel um, security uh, at attackers, so any sort of business attacker. So they might be someone on their feet pretending to be a repairman, yep. getting access to a building and then access to a sensitive computer uh, with sensitive, inf in sensitive information on it. Yep. Or it could be somebody being tricked into uh, clicking an email that they shouldn't or uh, it could just be a system that hasn't been patched properly. They're... they're it's just a test for the business's security hmm. to make sure uh, that it is actually up to scratch. Is it also not true that for the most part, the vulnerable security flaws remain with the end user? So therefore, you might have a business yeah. who could arguably have, <clears throat> let's just say, reasonable security, mm -hmm. but it becomes compromised by the end user. The end users are a factor, and yes, they are a big factor, uh, but they are not the only factor. So it, it is something... When there are some businesses tested, yes. whose security is just completely lax, isn't it? Oh, exactly. And that's why people like uh, penetration testers are able to go and do their job. Now, the, the penetration tester, it's kind of a rock star of the cybersecurity industry. These guys, um, they operate like spies. Yep. And they break into buildings and it's, it's very spy crafty. So, uh, yeah. yeah, it's... It's one of those jobs that people think, I want to get into cybersecurity and that's what I want to be because it is cool. Sounds like fun. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah. Although I wonder how people react when you go and say, well, here's your report. Um, I would love to complain about your security, but I can't, sir, because there isn't any. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't want to go down that path. Good day, Graham. How are you going, Chris? How are you going, Ben? Good day. I'm talking about this. I, I had a mate that used to... Uh, drill little holes in asbestos fences so he could put his camera through there and take photos of people that are studying insurance companies. One day, one day he oh, missed the guy. Yeah. The insurance investigator. He missed, he, yeah, and he missed the guy. And anyway, all of a sudden he heard this voice, what you doing? He said, this big farmer standing up there on a ladder. He's like, got a little ladder and he spotted him. And he said, I took off like hell back to my car and gone. Yeah, I think <laughs> so. That's yeah. what yeah. I wanted to ask you about. Now, now, I don't want to ask you that. They're gone. Yeah, you know, I was just about to say, I understand you have some issues with your iPhone. Yeah, look, oh, God, phones. I tell you what, I'm going to end up like William Pike, bald, or tearing my hair out. <laughs> uh, I had a Samsung, right? I don't know, it, it, 
buggered up on me. And then I had to send it away to Adelaide to get repaired. Right. And, of course, then they sent me messages to my email, and I didn't have a phone. Of course, the phone was over there. I said, well, how the hell do you think I got them? Because it was the only phone I had. So then I went and bought an Alcatel. Then I had trouble with that. Oh, dear. And Vodafone wouldn't, wouldn't swap that over. So I ended up going to Optus and get an iPhone 8. Right. The trouble was my passcode was in the damn uh, Samsung sitting over in Adelaide. So I couldn't remember it. So I got the Apple ID. Yep. So then I tried the recovery mode. And that takes forever. Is there any way to circumnavigate that damn thing or what? According uh, to them, I, yeah. should, I should be getting it back tomorrow. But, you know, oh, it's so frustrating. Yeah, it, it does. It drives you, nut, drives you nuts. You've really got to be on top of your security because, yeah, if you lose track of any passcodes or passwords or anything, it becomes a real pain. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I encourage people to use a password vault. Uh, but in your, in your case, it's not going to help much. So, I, right. yeah, I would, um, since you've got an iPhone, it is a brand new iPhone, yes? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Brand new, eight, eight, brand new eight. Brand new iPhone. The Blake said it had the same software as an 11. Is that right? Uh, yeah, it should have the same software as an 11. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So uh, in oh, your look, case... I, lo- I love the damn things, but yeah. just, uh, you know, so frustrating that it takes all these days just to uh, to get the damn thing back again. You yeah. know, surely there must be a quicker way to do it. Like, Mate, you know, I'll tell you one thing. Technology. One thing I do yeah. know, Graham, and I'll tell you because yep. I've seen somebody come unglued with this, do not yep. try and jerk Apple around where security is concerned. Yep. Because they take security no. so seriously, mate, they will sacrifice your phone before you'll be able to bust through. So don't get some idea that you're going to somehow crash through because Apple will smack you in the face a long time before well, that well, happens. Yeah. I, yep. I actually rang a guy and he was in the Philippines and he sounded like an American. And then he, he said, I'll book you in to see Apple tomorrow. And then he missed the booking. Then he said, I've got another company. There's somebody... Uh, well, a couple of initials. They're over in Brisbane Street. Apparently, they uh, recovered stuff from Apple and do Apple work and all that. Okay. So he booked me in for that. So I rang them before I went over this morning, uh-huh. and they said, "No, no, we can't help you." And I thought, "Well, how come this guy doesn't know over there? You know, from yeah. Apple Care, and, and yet this mob over here said, no, we, we can't help you once the recovery process is out. You had it. Just uh, you have to wait.'" <sighs> Bugger. Okay. Um, yeah, look, I, I would say pretty much your only course of action now would be to uh, either wait or uh, you would have to go in and see the guys in the Apple store uh, down on Hay Street. I would recommend doing and they that. And they won't be able to do anything for well, you. Yeah, I mean, if you explain the situation, they might be able to... They might know a way around it. Um, well, I'll, I'll wait till today and see what happens. If it doesn't yeah. come through the... Uh, you know, I'll be jumping up. Now, we'll be like Willie Pike. I'll have no here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you All very right, much for that, Graham. It's a fr- Thanks for the call. It's, it's a good thing, but it's a frustrating thing because we're talking about cyber security. <laughs> yes. That is something Apple take very, very seriously. Yes. The, I would actually put Apple, uh, say, well within the top five when it comes to cyber security and their products. They, they're one of the very few mm. that actually take uh, encryption and proper end-to-end encryption with their iMessaging seriously and their actual security controls on their mm. hardware and software is, uh, well, it's incredibly hard to beat. Nine double two double one eight eighty two. This is Ben Aylett from benaylett.com. One L, two T's in Aylett. That's also where you'll find his contact information. Our man with the technology, Ben Aylett's here. Nine double two double one eight eighty two. The number if you have any technological issues, questions, queries, poses. <laughs> or anything else. Or you're looking at something and thinking... I so want to punch oh, that. Yes. Yeah. I'm so telling you, don't do that. No, don't do that. Okay, the thought of doing it, the justification for doing it is all there. The pain <clears throat> and injuries you will suffer after are not worth it. Yep. You don't actually ultimately end up with satisfaction. <clears throat> Although the thought, it's very easy to talk yourself into it, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, yeah. You, you must have done that in your time. You've gone around and seen an issue and thought to yourself, i better do something about this because I do believe this person is going to get rather violent with this piece of equipment. Yeah, I mean, I've even been called after the fact. Oh, jeez, I bet you've seen some interesting results then. Yeah, yeah, there was... There was um... How hard is it to get blood out of circuits? <laughs> it's not so much blood. I, mean, I haven't seen much blood on actual computers. Yep. Uh, but I have seen someone, um, see, he was working on... His laptop, well, trying to get his laptop working properly. He had it sitting on the family room floor. Uh, oh, don't tell me he jumped on it. No, no, he, he did the old punt. So, he, oh, okay. He, so, that yeah, it was on the floor, screen was up, 
and he uh, sunk the boot right through the centre of the screen at the bottom near the hinge. At the time, probably felt really good. Afterwards, he went, what the hell have <laughs> oh, I done? better call Ben. Oh, bugger. Should have done that first. <laughs> yes. Good day, Peter. Hi, fellas. Um, I've got an iPhone issue. Um, I've got about 12,500 contacts in my phone. Whoa. And I was using my phone a second ago, and I just lost about... 10,000 of them. Um, and I'm um, just wondering um, how you're supposed to get those back. How, hang on a second. How would you just lose 10,000 of your contacts? First question. Second just, question, how would you even know that you'd lost 10,000 of them? Oh, okay. Um, I'm working real estate, so I know how many contacts I've got in my phone. Right. And I was looking for someone in particular... And yep. when I can't find anyone that's called me in the last year, I know I've lost. And you generally five. keep all of your records, do you? Like, you're not someone who wipes the records of who's called you or anything like that. No, I save I save them so that if yeah. they call me again, I know who I'm talking. Yeah, to. well, that that makes sense, especially in your line Fair of enough, business. Yeah. So, how does Peter get his contacts back? Ooh, that's a really, really good one. Uh, first place I'd go is I would go, go to iCloud. I'd go to the uh, the Apple Cloud service, which is where all of your uh, things are backed up to. So when you back up your iPhone to the cloud, it goes to the service called iCloud, and you can find contacts, me- uh, iMessages, and all sorts of other bits and pieces at the Apple iCloud. So I would start by logging in there and having a look around. Um, if you can't find that. Uh, do you also have a Google account there, mate? Yeah, I do. You do? All right. Yeah. Also have a look at contacts.google.com. It's possible you've got it synchronised with your Google accounts as well. Uh, and okay. Actually, I use Google accounts as my, um, sorry, Google contacts as my backup. So whenever I uh, save contacts, I save them to my Google account as well as on the phone. Okay, cool. Yeah. Have a look there, mate. All right. See how it goes. Thank you. Is there a risk when you lose your contacts like Peter has? <clears throat> yep. Is there a risk that when you go to look in somewhere like iCloud, you could accidentally back up the now corrupted to the cloud and then lose them from the cloud? Um, there is a chance that can happen, which is why I probably should have rec- um, advised Peter to do it from a computer. And not from his phone. All right. So hopefully, Peter, you're listening. Do that from your computer, yep. not from your phone. Because yes, you don't want the system to go, oh, this has changed since last time you were here. And then exactly, yeah. back up what you actually don't want backed up because you've lost all that information. So hopefully you've got that information, Peter. Thank you very much for that. <clears throat> yeah, She's at, all the best. Drives you nuts, especially in Peter's line of work. Uh, yeah. Um, but, all, but relying on one place to ha- to store all your contacts... Yeah, yeah, I know where you're going to go with this. Yeah. But it, it doesn't give you much redundancy. Yes, I mean, technology technology should work as promised all mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. they don't. That's why I'm here. Yes. <laughs> so we've we've actually got a plan ahead for when the technology doesn't work. It, yeah. t- it teaches us to be resilient. Indeed. We have, uh, while we're talking about cybercrime, yep. naked Zoom users targeted. This ah. is one of those times when you go, don't stand in front of Zoom while you're naked. Yes, and if you don't stand in front of a Zoom while you're naked, there is still a chance that someone will send you an email to say, ha-ha, I've got you, you are standing in front of a Zoom call naked, uh, doing stuff you shouldn't be doing. It'll be a real shame if I was to get that video and share it with all the people in your contacts. Yeah, it would be a real shame if only the video existed, you nupped in our nick off. Exactly. So uh, this is uh, following on the news, and, and this is very, very typical of your uh, usual cyber criminal. So what they do, they've got a, a tried and tested um, method of trying to extract money out of people, and it's usually by telling them that they've got something that they don't actually have that they can then uh, sort of uh, coerce you into paying money so you don't, Mate, so they don't release it. Mate, I've got a naked picture of you. <laughs> on Zoom, and I'm going to send it to somebody. I would say, yeah, good luck with that proposal. Yep. <laughs> but look, all it takes, because these guys, they send out thousands, if not millions of these emails. You only need a few responses. They just get. Yep. They just need a couple of percent, and they can actually send out to all these people for you know, like 
pennies. It doesn't cost much at all to just spray out this spam. So they spray it, it and just wait for someone to come and someone will come back. Yep, the good old spray and pray. Uh, so, yes, um, don't. <laughs> and they, make, they can make a lot of money. But the thing is, don't. And the other thing, you have to stop for a moment. Now, would I stand and do something rather odd in front of a Zoom camera? And you, no. Have I done it? No. So what's this person talking about? Yep. But even if you have, there's a good chance that uh, that video has not been captured and is not in the hands of these bad guys. Mm. It's just a scare tactic and the, the typical pattern is that they latch on to the most recent news story. In this case, it was a high-profile high reporter uh, and TV analyst had been uh, found to be... Um, he was caught naked on Zoom and it was a big deal and it made the news when it makes the news... The cyber criminals use that story to then say, oh, it's not just him, it's also you. Uh, so it, it, it's a typical pattern. Only a difference, somebody compared about, somebody cared about him. <laughs> Nobody is actually going to allow themselves to be too concerned about me naked. Yep, yeah. So, uh, yeah, just uh, watch out for that. So yeah. anything that they sounds... They never stop, do they? They've all got different ways and they all come at you in different ways. <laughs> yep. And all it's about is we want you to hand over your money and we're going to find some way to blackmail you into doing it. Yeah, so the the, the, <laughs> the good old days of when hacking was just um, because you can or you wanted to learn how to do something or it was just for fun, yep. uh, there was no actually real malicious intent behind it. It's, those days are long and uh, long gone. Well and truly, and it's now all about the money. Uh, it is quite it's lucrative. very malicious and, like you said, quite lucrative. Yes, absolutely. People are making a lot of money out of this. Yep. Mm. So please don't fall for that. No, it's a very good one. Yep. My friend, time has eluded us. Uh, <sighs> by the way, I should point out this man also identified by his Hawaiian shirts. Yes. Now we're going to have to say, boys, trendy glasses as well. That's right. com is a website, one L, two T's in Aylet. BenAylett.com. That's also where you'll find all of his contact information. And we shall talk next week. I'll catch you then.